How you doing? This is Ivan with Bite Size Wisdom for Busy People. And I'm back with another episode to help you live more consciously. Today, our topic is on living from presence. Our whole self-development journey is one towards a deeper understanding and embodiment of presence. The more presence that we can invite into our life, the more our life comes alive. Living with little presence, our life just slips through our fingers and passes us by. We then become a passive participant to our life and don't experience it fully. Presence means to be here and now, grounded in our life, grounded in our bodies, through not only the sensory experience, but also aware of ourselves, doing whatever it is that we may be doing as we are doing it. We fully inhabit our bodies and actions by being an active participant in our life. You can think of consciousness as the timeless energy and the basic foundation of our presence. Being timeless, we can experience a deep sense of wholeness and inner peace. Many spiritual people, for example, who may be into yoga, they may develop strong sensations of their bodies, emotions, and thoughts. Yet, their consciousness can remain weak as their identification with their sensory experiences clouds their clear seeing of consciousness itself. This is because people tend to only focus on the contents, on the foreground, the objects of their experience, losing sight of the silent background of consciousness. Most of us live in complete unawareness of this background as it is quite subtle and formless and we are conditioned to focus only on form. So most of us never clearly distinguish consciousness itself because it is too mixed up with our sensory experience of the world and with our thoughts and feelings in our inner world. This background or screen of experience is space-like awareness, is timeless, unchanging, and allows us to cognize experience. When we start to live more consciously, we begin to reverse this relationship. It's a shift in perspective, a radical shift, where we bring the background to the foreground and the foreground moves to the background, not losing sight of either. The conscious thinking mind becomes more passive and our subconscious becomes more conscious and active. Our aim is a harmonious integration of the two through our self-development work with like meditation, we allow the contents to relax and calm down on their own until we begin to recognize consciousness itself as it becomes untangled from its contents and sensations. The longer we can learn to abide as this restful awareness, the more our various energies of thinking feeling and sensing become balanced and our presence grows stronger and more stable. This is why we must be disciplined in our inner work. We need to develop the will to be present, the will to be. If we are not intentional, our presence will be weak and fleeting. There must be something in us that truly wants to wake up, that wants to be present and is proactive and making that choice moment to moment. We need to remember to remember ourselves, to constantly remember to be mindful. We need to develop this will to be. No one can do it for us. This is a conscious choice. This will to be is the active participant in whatever we may be doing and determines our degree of presence it takes the will to be to consciously direct our attention. Our will, which acts through our attention and intention, can attract higher energies, which can coalesce and blend with the lower energies in our bodies, increasing consciousness. Focusing our will to be in the sensation of our bodies serves as a good foundation 
as sensation is the bridge between the higher and lower energies, being present in the sensation of the entire body serves as our anchor to the now while also attracting higher energies which can then become like a force field of presence around our bodies. Note that it's important to learn to use our will to be to become actively present within the energy of sensation, not to just superficially have an awareness of our body in a general sense. It's like being aware and present to the energy coursing throughout your entire body from the inside out. Without being present within our body, without this will to be moment to moment, if there's nobody home actively directing our attention, it doesn't matter how aware you are of your body, you will not become more conscious and present. I know many people who have done yoga for years and years and many athletes who have amazing control over their bodies, yet they are not any more aware or conscious than a random person off the street. This also goes for a majority of the people who are interested in Advaita or Neo-Advaita, commonly known as non-duality, which essentially teaches that there is nothing for us to do, that we are already enlightened, since the background of the consciousness is always available, which if we could go directly to the background of consciousness and realize ourselves as that and remain as that, that would be great. But in practice, the majority of people need to have their minds and bodies prepared and purified to be a vehicle for consciousness to really wake up. Non-dual teachings are also very appealing to our egoic mind as it prefers the path of least resistance, but they also lack a lot of the development and the potential for our human side. Even the great late sage Ramana intended his non-dual teachings to be only for the fewest of the few who were spiritually mature for it. For the rest, he encouraged the study of the scriptures and several practices like self-inquiry as our will to be becomes stronger and feeds our presence, we will begin to raise ourselves above our habitual and reactionary behavior, our habitual and mechanical thoughts and feelings. We may start to abide longer in thought-free awareness in our pure presence, which can be described as just the simple feeling, the simple sense, of our I-ness, our amness, our isness, getting to really distinguish and pinpoint and identify this I-ness is key to progressing on our inner journey. Abiding as presence, we can become simultaneously aware of the inner and outer, meaning we are actively aware of our contact with the outside world via our senses, and also aware and receptive to our inner world. This simultaneous awareness of the inner and outer blends into one, just a relaxed presence of being here and now fully. Most people spend their entire day jumping from one to the other. Their attention is either engaged with the external world and don't notice clearly what they are thinking or feeling or they are more caught up with their thoughts and feelings and not aware of their surroundings. Here in Korea, if the weather is nice in the morning, I like to ride my bike and I also have a nice bell which I use to temporarily shock and wake people up that I come across on my path. For many, that split second where they move out of my way is the most aware they might be all day unknowingly. Presence. Presence can be measured in terms of frequency, duration, intensity, and depth. Our self-development work revolves around the development of these factors. Let's start with frequency. Frequency means how often during our day do we actually remember to be present. 
to actually make the effort to do so. And also remember the last time we remember to do it. Our goal is to shorten the in-between times using both formal meditation or sitting time and any other methods that we may be working on in our day-to-day -day life. And then duration. Duration lets us know how stable our presence is. The longer we are able to stay present, to stay in our I-ness, the more stable our presence is. At the end of your day, start to estimate how much of your day were you truly present and how much were you just functioning on autopilot with little to no awareness of your inner and outer world. For most people, this will start as a very small percentage of their day. But don't get discouraged. We need to crawl before we can walk, before we can fly. Our eventual goal is 100% of continual presence Intensity. Intensity means the quality and energy of your will to be present. It's a strong intention to be present, which makes for a vivid and relaxed state of being. Intensity does not mean being forceful, for this creates tension and makes it impossible for us to be really present. The middle way of the Buddha was the way of alert relaxation. Depth. Depth deals with the degree and stillness and clarity of our presence, how much energy and will is present. If there is complete stillness and also the energy of the will, of the attention and intention to be engaged with the moment, we will be able to have the clarity to see the depths of our being and gain deep wisdom. If there is only deep stillness without the energy of our will, we will be more in a trance-like state, lacking the transformative clarity and insight. This is often one of the drawbacks to the methods or paths which focus exclusively on one-pointed concentration. Our attention should be not too tight nor too relaxed that you fall asleep. The Buddha initially tried for many years by going the way of concentration only to see that it couldn't take him all the way to inner liberation. With continual practice, presence becomes something very real for us, very palpable, that we can easily distinguish the difference of when we are not living from presence. Our spiritual practice is then about invoking presence into our lives as much as we can. We invoke presence by remembering returning, sustaining, and repeating. For most of us, living from presence is so delightful that it should motivate most of us to continue and remember our practice. Every day, we must remember to live from presence. When we happen to have that moment of awareness, we need to remember to use this remembrance as an opportunity to return to one of our current practices or methods that we may be working on to cultivate presence. And then as we return to our practice, we try to deepen our intention to remain present because in the beginning, presence is very weak and any thought, feeling, or sensory experience can take us out of presence and back to living inattentively back to being a smartphone zombie. Each time we return, our challenge is learning to sustain our presence. And then finally, we repeat the process over and over with the aim of shortening the times between remembering. In time, we will be deepening our presence. Eventually, we may arrive at an effortless effort if we become inwardly integrated. But we must be careful that we not only imagine intellectually that we are being constantly present. Because I know many people who have read The Power of Now, the very popular book, who are just only constantly thinking about being in the now while still being identified to that train of thought and not actually attending to the moment from presence in a wholesome way. So we must be genuine and sincere with our inner work. If our path 
is going to lead us back home. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. And if you did, stay tuned. I will continue and touch and build on all of today's theme, on all of today's themes. As you know, that's what my channel's about. And if you are new to my channel, make sure to subscribe and share with anyone who may enjoy this content. And I really appreciate you being here with me today. Wherever you are in the world, take care. Peace.